uh, yeah. our first ever calls together. So it's absolutely lovely. I know you're keyed up and excited. It's very odd dichotomy because we're going to call and you're basically just listening, but yet your heart races and you get very excited about it. Well, check that at the door because frankly, this takes time, energy, effort. Here I am once again counseling. When I say to my clients, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a motivational speaker, I'm not here to talk this up, although I'm very opinionated about things such as do not ever buy a laundromat and don't ever build a laundromat because here we are. We see a store that has everything that we need in place with a non-hostile takeover. Without further ado, let's call Nick. I'll say some things to you the first time ever. I won't repeat them again, such as if we get disconnected, call me back direct. Keep in mind, I might be on a call with this guy. So if we do get disconnected, when you call back, just zip it and see if I'm talking. Please take notes, by the way. I'll expect you to write very casual. It always starts with the date. And Danny dialed. I usually put a little arrow. We've got one number. Off we go, stand by. This is so exciting. Did you subscribe? Please hold while we connect your call to Leasing and Sales Department. So, it's a Google Voice number to an office. This is Bob. Hi, I believe I need to speak with Nick. My name is Danny. Uh, we don't have a Nick here. That is my luck. Is this uh, a real estate type operation, GQ North? Yes. Oh, yeah, good. what are you looking for? I am yeah. looking to sign a commercial lease in lovely Sacramento. I had, I guess, okay. I had the wrong first um, name. You, I think Nick is a is a property manager. Uh, no, we don't have a Nick. Are you which shopping center are you? Got it. At? Did you say Bob? Yes. Hi, Bob. I'm Danny. I am looking at. Strip mall, there's also a coin laundry here, among other things. Okay, what are you looking to open? I am looking to sign a lease in the coin laundromat, believe it or not. Okay, so are you taking over the coin laundromat? Not at the moment. I'll explain. I'm sure you'll smell what I'm cooking here pretty quick. I've been doing laundries in three states, California, New Mexico, Arizona, for almost 20 years. My partner and I scout existing okay. locations. We walk in. Obviously, they're open to the public. We see what we can see. And Bob, when there's room yeah. for improvement, broken equipment, poor operating procedures and hours, there's a kind of a smell to the place. You get it. Underperforming, to put it politely. I reach out to you. This is not a cold yeah. call. I've been in the store more than once. My partner and I take this pretty seriously. And this is how I proliferate. This is how I build the empire. Let me say this. When it works well... Bob says, you know, Danny, they're on the ropes. It's been a while or they're month to month. I'm not asking. When that happens, I want to discuss terms with you. I want to renew that place by spending hundreds of thousands on equipment, run another successful store. I don't take your current tenant and toss them out by their ear. I can't do that. I don't want to do that, frankly. And let me say this. This isn't a horrible laundry. It's certainly not terrible. I've seen much, much worse even this week. But uh, I don't want to leave that stone unturned, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, all I can say is they have a lease for another five years. Good. So I have no power to do anything beyond that. Got it. And, you know, let me say this. I appreciate being able to make your acquaintance. I got your number from one of the other tenants. Mm -hmm. And we are so used to the phone ringing and someone selling newspapers, right? This person wants something. I'm buying. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not selling anything. I want to make this relationship so that you understand in a year, six days, six months, if and when something happens here, rather than put it on the market, give me a ring. I'll send you an email and if and when that time comes, we'll make it quick. 
Okay. Uh, good. I appreciate you. Again, you know, I, I, I had the wrong name, so I'm not even sure how that happened. Bob, what is the That's best okay. no email worries. address for you? I'll send you. And I don't have a mailing list. I'm not going to put you on it since it doesn't exist. I'm just going to send you some pictures of my stores, what my partner Craig and I do and how we do it. And then you'll have that. I'll put a big heading laundromat lease so you'll know who we are. What's, what's the email? Yeah. like a lovely winter chalet in the hills? That works, sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, you wanna spell it right. I'm Danny D'Angelo, I'll CC my partner Craig as well. Thanks for the time, and keep this in mind, Bob, you're okay. a big big time realtor, yeah. man about town. Maybe your group buys a building in a year or a day and they have an underperforming laundromat. This is my cell phone number, reach okay. out. We'll try to beat you up on the rent and we'll do business. Okay. Thanks, Sounds buddy. Good, man. So here is our first ever, ever, ever telephone call. And two things. Number one, let's go through this line by line. You found the right number, good for you, by speaking to someone in, who's another tenant. Yet that tenant was kooky enough to give you the wrong name. Nobody there named Nick even exists. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really strange because well, I spoke with the person. I swear he said, "Welcome." So it could be to my world. Yeah. Really. Secondly, what what was now famously? I always ask you what you think because I know what I. Th what do you think of Bob? I think he was kind of um, like, "Eh, where are these people?" Excellent. Sort of Very standoffish, to put it politely. Uh, yes. Can yeah. you blame him? Well, here's the thing about Bob. He gave me the info email, which is horseshit, right? He didn't say, oh, absolutely, Danny. You sound like a high roller. We should probably do drinks. As much as I hate that, I had one of those yesterday. This child had me on speakerphone, and he was literally 10 feet away from his phone and just giving me all the, the whole college answer for this, that, and the other. Oh, it sounds great, Danny, using my name every second. On, on the other end of the spectrum... Bob did give us an email. Then he said his last name. And I said, oh, spelled like that. I, you could tell. It's just this dude has every right when he's sitting on his couch watching reruns of Hogan's Heroes cracking a beer. He has every right to ignore his phone, answer it, and tell somebody to fuck off or do business with that person. Every right. But the difference is he's a real estate agent. He works for a company. He represents that company and the tenants and potential new tenants. You follow? Right. It, it irks me a little because, again, the other day a client said to me she loved the psychology of what I do. Everything that we do every day, unless you live in a bubble, involves psychology with others. When you get on the bus, do you want to say good morning to the driver? Do you want to kick him in the shins? You want to get some nookie from the wife again, not, not the bus driver's wife. So <laughs> even though not much happened and the headline of a YouTube video would be eh, still right. I represent you and I'm going to make certain without too much flowery conversation that our good friend Bob knows what we're about. Now, what's going on in the background since you're brand new to this his number will be in my phone. It's his work line, okay? Yeah. It will be list link back to you with my own vernacular so that if he ever calls from that number or any agent does, I will know. This address is also linked to you inexorably. Might be your third or fourth store in a while. Like I said before we called, not a bad store. A picture is indeed worth a thousand words. And I could look at this laundry and say, it's not bad. Now, you could walk into just about any laundromat and pick on it and say, oh, I don't like this or that is wrong. The ones that are in dire straits, it's a lot more evident. And in the future, I'll look for you to give me more of those stores in order to increase your chances of getting this done more expediently. Anyone that sticks with it gets this done. Anyone. Now, okay, I, yeah, so what I'd like you to do... I'm on top of it, and I'm, I don't mean to interrupt, but before I forget, because I will, take this guy's yeah. name, 
go to the website that we already have, try to figure out the proper spelling of his last name, and maybe a cell phone number. If you find all of that, plug it back into the document, and I will update my contact for him. You follow? Am I remiss? You can tell me. I work for you, not the other way around. Should I have asked him for a cell phone? I don't think he would have given it. You know, I, I, the guy wasn't chummy. Sometimes, yesterday, I hung up on a guy because he just wouldn't shut the fuck up. He's a landlord. He's like, well, what do you think about it? You'll see a video drop about it shortly. But he literally wanted <laughs> to bend my ear about everything having to do with laundromats, yet didn't want to remove his tenant. We didn't really have much to talk about. But I could tell, yeah. again, psychologically, this dude wants to run that laundromat when he bounces his tenant. He doesn't want to give it to my client. I'm sorry, you were saying. I see. No, I was just, um, I forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. I oh, no, this was it. Dude, I've been out looking at laundries, tons of them, right? And this was one of the worst ones. I, I put the worst at the top for you. So maybe I got to keep digging, you know? Okay, let me tell you second. exactly what you did wrong without knowing. I'm not following you. I don't have a helicopter that's uh, watching you. But here's the thing. You're using the internet to scout laundromats. You can't do that. What do well, I mean? So I find, yeah, I find uh, like laundries on Google and I'm going from Google to Google address. So how else? I mean, but, 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 but. So I was right. Thank you very much. The okay. gems that we are looking for, literally, bro, they've given up on a Google listing. Can you even believe it? Hard to believe, Hard to. I know. And we've got another call to make for the kids and folks at home. So this is very exciting, but more information to drop. This industry, no one knows, including the Coin Laundry Association itself, no one knows how many laundromats exist. Think about that. In the U.S. or the world, no one knows. Because if you drop into New York City, Los Angeles, or Ottumwa, Iowa, you're going to have to drive around, talk to people, in order to find whether there's 37 or 3,000 laundromats in that community. No one knows. Seems odd, hmm. doesn't it? How many Starbucks are yeah. there in the U.S.? I could look it up in a second, and I'd find out within one or right. two locations. Thousands of them. The reason for that is because these idiots are running these stores into the ground. The good ones. And it's odd, isn't it? When I say the good laundromats, I mean the bad laundromats. The ones that we want. The horrific, disgusting, filthy, nasty stores that have all of the infrastructure that we need literally have given up on having a telephone ringing in the back room. They don't want to spend $37 on a phone bill. They don't have anyone working there. They have a cell phone in their pocket. The mistake is they're not listed on Yelp, Google. You know all of this from my course, and I'm not going to repeat it. The first thing you do when you do a takeover is connect a phone and then forward it to your cell and then answer it because you take this business seriously. Those of us on the uptick that are earning tens of thousands of dollars a month in our stores are obviously taking it seriously. So you said it yourself, you're Googling laundromats near me. I was with my production team in Orlando and Texas, and we had hours and hours before our flights. And they said, let's go look at some laundries. I was like, ah, shit, here we go. What? What's wrong? We're going to go find some horrible laundries. And like you, I was in the same predicament because I said, it's not really that easy. I, I, I'm not a bullshitter. I'll admit it. Because we only had a few hours. And yeah. I ex explained on camera that video is dropping soon. I told Eric, I said, you can't just Google laundromats near me because you'll find good ones. Sometimes they're nasty. Sometimes they're falling apart. But the preponderance of those locations are good. They're being well run and operated. They have a Google presence. They're on Yelp. They're in YP.com. The real gems have given up on all of that. They will tell you when you walk into the store and you speak to the operator half asleep behind the counter, oh, I don't need that. It's all word of mouth. Everybody knows that we're here. But one of the indications of failure is the fact that A, he's wrong, and B, he's in the laundromat. He's sitting there able to jabber jaw with you. He doesn't run 30 locations. He can't. That said, you're doing it wrong. You've got to drive. Now, there is no magic BB. There's no distributor you're going to call up and make a relationship with and say, hey, can you show me where the good gems are? Because they themselves 
would rather scoop those up, revamp, retool, and then sell equipment in place. Got to drive around. And one of the tricks I like, go into the decent laundry like this one. Talk to the nearest customer. Hey, how long you been coming here? Don't try to talk to them when they're putting their laundry into a washer because it's all assholes and elbows. They're in a hurry. He, she, they, them, they're in a hurry. So leave them alone. As soon as they put the laundry in the washer, now they have an hour, 45 minutes, so they're totally relaxed. That's when you hit them. When they're sitting there reading the paper. Do people read papers anymore? When they're playing with their phone. Hey, excuse me. Can I ask how long you've been coming here? They'll tell you. Oh, a year, two years. When they open, blah, blah, blah. They'll tell you. They know. They're the consumer. Next question. Where did you used to go? Oh, that's when you get the gems. They point in some ambiguous direction. Say, don't go there. There's one over to the south. There's a piece of shit. They'll give you an earful. Right. Make a beeline to that store. Scout it. Put it in the document. All right. So what do we do here? I'm going to email our friend Bob. I'm going to CC you as soon as we hang up the phone. I will input all his information in my wireless cellular, and I'll have it forever. Change the name. We have nicknames for every store. It's standoffish Bob. You know, I know you called it Christmas in May because there's goddamn Christmas tree lights in there. But whew. Yeah. all right. So I am scrolling. We have one more chance for glory and another. This location. is the guy. He was literally asleep, like in your video. He was almost like that guy that was asleep. And he wanted to sell it to me. You know, I talked to him, the owner or the operator, sorry, operator, uh, spoke with him. But um, I dug into who owns the property, talked to Dave Swanson. He actually owns the property. So, um, okay. The, give me a, give me a chronological it. timeline because you're fucking killing me. I have a date on this thing, which is uh, a, about a month ago. Is this before you hired me? Uh, I'm sorry. I screwed up on no, this. No, dude, process. Jesus, and, relax. It's I, I just want to know what happened. So yeah. you spoke person. with Dave, the landlord. He said he would be on vacation. So when did that happen? Uh, on 5-16-23. Okay, so almost exactly a month ago. Yeah. Before he you hired me. me. No, I mean, we were still engaged. I, I Not engaged, but, you know. Working. I'm already married. Okay, anyway, these are the right, jokes. So, dude, dude, dude. Why is it bad that you talked to Dave? You tell me. I know why. Maybe you don't think and, it is. Maybe it's no big deal. Yeah, it's 100% bad, but I don't want to bring something to you if, unless it's the right person. You know, we had a couple of calls and it failed because I didn't have the right numbers for you. One was a disconnect. It was horrible. Okay, but let's break that down. I ask you in my written materials, once you hire me, I ask you to vet the numbers, yes. But fib, lie, don't tell all the truths. When you call, of course, we're not lying in business, but when you call, call from a block line, see if anybody answers, number one. If you think it's Dave the landlord and a woman answers, she, hello? Hi, is Dave there? You got the wrong number, sweetie. Click, okay, that's an old woman. You have the wrong number. Number two. If a man answers and you say, Dave, and he says, yes, sir, don't slam the phone down, scared. There's a lot of Daves. And depending on how you found the number, maybe you found the number online. Maybe another 10. I mean, the last number we called was certainly GQ Realty, and it was certainly the right number, but totally wrong name. Again, we're, we're, we're experiencing this together. I've done it thousands of times. For the first time with you, I'm going to be gentle. So vetting the number means call it. If it's disconnected, it, it, it ain't right. Consider the source. If a woman in the laundromat gives you a number and she says, oh, it's on my phone. I got the landlord right here. Oh, can I have a look at that? Be a douche. Get in her personal bubble. Have a look at the number. Make sure she gives it to you properly. Because if she gives you the number one digit off, where are we in a week? You're not going to be able to go traverse back to that moment in time unless you have a DeLorean and find that woman and get the right number. If she has a business card or the neighbor at the liquor store says, oh yeah, my, my landlord, here's his number. Can I have that card? That's the only one I got. May I snap a photo of it? Sure. Be aggressive. Don't punch anybody in the mouth. That's my job. Take a picture of it. Make sure you get the digits proper. Now, 
If you have the number found online, whatever else, we've called the number. We're back to that point in time. Hi, Dave. Yes. Dave, I'm Craig. I'm interested in painting your parking lot, but let me finish. I have a government grant. It's going to cost you nothing. Oh, which location? Now you've got a guy that owns a building, right? We figured that out simply. And nobody wants to buy shit from anybody. Now, I'm not telling you to lie. I'm telling you to do a little fib once you've done the work to find the number. I have guys, a few, police officers, investigators, they carry a badge. They can't use that badge to find this information, but they're savvy. They're smart. They know how to manipulate the system, the phones, etc. Call the number, vet the number, make sure the number rings for the love of God. I have new clients that give me 11 numbers. Hey, Danny, I did a search, and uh, I'm pretty sure this guy's name is Bob, and he has 11 numbers. What are you doing? <laughs> Every three-year-old has a cell phone these days, but they don't have 11 numbers. Nobody has 11 numbers. You might have a fax, a residential number, and a cell, but nobody has 11 numbers. So I have to have that conversation. That's not you. I have people that call up, and they're, they're in a, another business, so go with what you know. If you're a, an accountant, say, hey, I've been an accountant, a CPA for 20 years. I'm looking for some space. Ah, oh, we don't have any available. Oh, I went by Eastern Avenue. That's not your, your building? It is, but there's no available space. <laughs> Done. Okay. Maybe, you're, okay. maybe you I, like to I'm eat. I maybe maybe you one. like to eat. Tell them you got a food truck. Now, why are they going to give you the information? Maybe you're talking to... If you go into a pizza shop next door, don't elbow your way in at noon and say... Who's the motherfucking landlord of this place? Push your way to the front of the line and, and command respect. No. Buy a slice. You know this from my materials. Buy a slice. Be the doormouse. Yeah. Be the fly on the wall. Other euphemisms, etc. After five or six minutes sitting in that location, you're going to become part of the wallpaper. Maybe you notice that the, the, the grandfather in the back's throwing pie. The kid behind the counter, I mean kid, he's 40, he's running the register. And the kid kid, it's summertime, the kid's running a broom. You're looking at three generations of pizza pie owners. Sit, mm -hmm. eat your pie, choke it down if it's terrible. You're in California, which it usually is. And then listen, maybe at some point grandpa <laughs> yells at dad, says, hey, you get the coin yet? And dad says, Jimmy, go get the quarters. Oh, guess what? They are the laundromat operators. Oof, now you know. Right. You always yeah. have to zip it when it comes to... This is espionage, dude. Okay. You're out there, boots on the ground. You don't want to give too much information. It's corporate yeah, this, this guy, espionage. Guaranteed, I give it too much information. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm... Okay. It, it, it's... Okay. But I asked you something, and you didn't give me a direct answer. Why is it bad that you spoke to Dave? It's bad on many levels. Number it's, one... It's not what I... It's not what I say. It's what I don't say. Uh, <laughs> sort of thing. Like, okay. But it's I'm not even in. that. I want to go deeper. I want to peel the onion even further. You talk to the fucking guy. I don't... Maybe it was perfect. Maybe it was impeccable. Maybe the conversation was brilliant. I'll give you all the credit in the world. When I call... He's never going to equate you to me. Even after I say my partner, Craig, even after I mention the fact that he, you called him about a month ago, it, it, it's, it's the nature of it. Dude, I, I haven't, I'm working on my eighth Harley, which means I don't own one right now, right? Since I had my 14-year-old, I, I stopped the bike thing. I yeah. used to get the bike trader. And my friends and I would sit around. These aren't prank calls. I'd call the, old, the bike that I wanted. I'd call the old biker. Um, hi, yeah, can you tell me about your Harley? This is before caller ID, all right? I'm old. Yeah, it's, uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. You're going to love it. It's got the perfect. Does, does it leak oil? No, it wouldn't leak oil. No, Get, The bike's 10 grand, right? I'd say, can you take five? Boom, they'd hang up. I'd call back either an hour later or the next day with a different voice. And I'd say, will you take six? I'm beating them down. I'm browbeating these people who I've never met by just calling and making them think personally, hey, the market is screwed. People are offering half of what I want to get for this thing. And then when it was finally me, myself, and I, I would call them and say, eh, I, think the, I think your price is a little high. And now this guy's like downtrodden because he's had all these phone calls from all these me's. <laughs> Basically, it's negotiating, yeah. right? Without, okay. without the horse shit. 
Okay. Cool. This is Dave. You are telling me he is the landlord. And when you spoke to him one month ago, he said, quote, he would be on vacation for the next few weeks and to reconnect mid-June. That's what he said, yeah. Okay. And he also asked me to write up what I wanted to do and send it to him. He gave me his email address. Now, what would which, I have said if he said that to me? You would have said, bullshit, I'm not doing that. And <laughs> no, so I didn't do it. I'm not Mr. Negative. I would have said, Dave, let's <laughs> make sure you're not crazy. Let's make sure I'm not crazy. Let's be certain that we're even close to having a real deal here before we go to the mattresses, before we put anything on paper. And dude, I don't blame you. You you hired me because you're not me, and that's okay. Yeah. The absolutely. layer all I say and it's in one of the course videos, if that's the operative word, if you're thinking of bringing me on board, don't call the landlord. What I mean is not as you, not as someone interested, don't ever mention the laundromat. If you would have walked in that pizzeria and said, "I want to own that laundry, who owns it?" Even the 16-year-old pushing the broom fuck is this guy it was yeah so don't go in right. the back door slow and steady ask some questions about the landlord the space hey uh pizza was the best i've ever had my god you guys are geniuses now they're all proud breaking their arm patting themselves on the back give the kid a dollar doing a hell of a job and then hey i'm an accountant do you look like an accountant i don't know do you look like a food truck guy with tattoos? I don't know. Tell a story. I'm interested in leasing some space here. If they don't own the building, they're, gonna, they're not even going to know if there's empty space there because they have blinders on. They park in the back or in the front in the best spot. They go in and make the pie. Mm -hmm. Done it yeah. a million times, so I know. All right. You spoke to Dave. Now, please, for the love of God, all I'm seeing is that he said he was on vacation. You're not going to hurt your feelings or mine. What was really said? You mentioned the laundromat itself or did you? Oh, yeah, definitely talked about the laundromat. Uh, talked about, I tried to use some of your lingo, uh, which was around uh, uh, in the laundry business, you know, putting together, you know, anyway, it's been. And, a that, and that kind of hurts because what I say you're my partner, and I use that as a euphemism. My partner, Craig, you know, I, I got partners. And at the end of the day, we are both introduced like I, we will be with Bob with the previous call. We're introduced through an email. Oh, no, I, I, I did mention you. I said, hey, I want to call you next Tuesday. Uh, we have time. See I you got next my Tuesday. partner. Yeah. Well, the problem with that, you're making me out to be the bad cop. You're saying, oh, my partner is much, much better at beating down landlords, which I say to them personally. But, dude, it's not the end of the world. We haven't talked again. But damage has been done. That's all I'm saying. In the, and I'm, I'm confused because a lot, a lot of new clients, they see the course and they're like, ah, I spent a couple hundred dollars. I'm able to do this. They start calling and they start burning bridges and destroying relationships. <laughs> and not in the way that I do right. it. Trust me. I call somebody a prick and slam the phone down because they deserved it. You, you get it. You understand it. I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, yeah. I will stay away from calling any landlords. I do my best. Or I'll fib, I know. Like you suggested. I know. I like the, the what one what was team. said of substance on this call? What was said? Hmm. Of I substance? told them that the property was running down and that, you know, we come in and really, I know all know, that put in brand. New I know equipment. all that. Yeah. But what did he say? Did he say, oh yeah, you know, the guy's a, because I don't see notes in reference to the conversation. Where, did you have pad and paper the way we do? Uh, I know I wrote a whole bunch of notes. I just ripped them out. Um, I, anyway, yeah. Um, so what was the, uh, here's what I want to know. Does he love his tenant? Does he hate his tenant? Is it time? Uh, he was um, neutral, neutral on the tenant. Didn't really, I don't think he knew what was going on. Because, I mean, there, there were hot water heaters out, you know, all this. Still? So, okay. So stinky cold suds is what you named it. I get it. Does it smell in there? Oh, it was horrible. I don't know what, why it smelled so bad. I know I why. Like, the first thing was. I know why. The operator does it. Every single laundromat is on the end cap. Okay, it's always on the end of the strip mall. You know why? Because the Romans figured out that water flows downhill. They put the laundromat on the end cap because 
We are responsible for wet and dry lint within our facilities. The water flows through the nail salon and the doggy daycare and the supermarket, then to the laundromat, then out to the city. The laundromat will have a wet lint trap. We all know about dry lint because we deal with it at home. Mm-hmm. Your residential right. dryer, you have lint and you have to clean it out or you'll start a fire. Okay. But what you don't see in a residence is the wet lint and there's even more of it. All the lint you see in your dryer comes from your socks and your shirts and your hats and your pants. All of the wet lint, even more so from the washing process, not the drying process. Now, in a laundromat or any industrial facility, all of that wet lint, it's just like dry lint, only make it wet, right? We could do a doctor science project. It flows not straight out to the city because the city doesn't want to deal with it. The city wants you, i.e. the laundromat operator, i.e. the strip mall owner to deal with said lint. So walk around any laundromat, sometimes in the back room, sometimes uh, behind the dryers, most of the time outside, accessible by outside forces. There is anything from a pie plate to a manhole size or three manhole size covers. Those cover the wet lint traps. The water flows in, then it drops down a few feet, then it flows out to the city. Between all of that, the weight of the wet lint will drop and it will accumulate and collect, okay? People that own laundromats, second and third operators have no fucking idea that they're supposed to clean that out. You know the poopy trucks you see around town? that they, they oh, clean yeah. out the people's porta-potties. porta-potties or they clean out uh, people that don't have city septic, they clean out septic systems, all of that. Those trucks also clean out wet lint. It's like 100 bucks every quarter. It's nothing. It's cheap. It's inexpensive. The first time every laundromat I took over ever and every client, you go pull the cover and the porta poppy poopy guy is going to say, holy shit, I've seen where they need a jackhammer. <laughs> because it's never been done. The water keeps flowing. The wet lint is going to the city side. Nobody's ever the wiser. But what do you think that does to the drains in the laundromat? They back up. That's when you see all yeah. those towels shoved in front of washing machines because the, the, the water is backing up. That stench, that smell, is all your filthy, crotchy jeans or the customer's wet yeah. lint backing up into the store. There you go. So that smell, we love it because that smell tells us that they haven't done. I even use that as a nerve that I press with landlords many, many times. Enjoy this moment in time because when now that you and I are in this together, we're going to be churning through these calls on a tip on your day and making those calls. Boom, boom, boom. Have a nice day. Nobody answered, leaving messages. We got Bob. We got information. He was meh. Now we're going to call Dave. What do I need to know? What was said that I need to know? I can look at the laundry. I can see the, the, the pictures that you sent. It's got 15-year-old equipment. It's got a ton of top loaders. It's a clean, neat facility. At least it was. Is that your wife rolling around in there that I see all the pictures of? Yeah, that's probably Michelle. Yeah. She's my significant. We're not married. but yeah. I, I, I figured otherwise you're stalking this woman because she's that's that's good cover. She's like in every picture. I like, I like the yeah. same dress. All right, so what, 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 where am I going to be ambushed by calling this guy and trying to talk to him? Or maybe nothing. What do you remember most? Uh, he mentioned the guy has a lease in place. He didn't mention month to month, anything like that. I think he's, he, the guy's paying his rent on time. I talked to Bob. He like wants out. You can just see it on his face. You all, know, right. Now, now, all right, you're killing me. Bob is the operator, right? Yeah. Okay. Dave is the landlord. Yeah. Got it. I know that. But Bob wants out. I don't give a shit. Not personally about Bob, his family, his kids. I don't, we don't care about the operator because they don't care about the consumer. They're no longer servicing the community or themselves. So none of that matters. I don't bring them up. I don't talk about them purposefully. I talk about the location, the store. I don't care if a guy owns 137 7-Elevens. Okay, probably a great guy. 7-Eleven, part of the corporate culture, is telling them the floors better be clean and we're going to renew the place with new tile every six months. It doesn't happen in laundries. All right, we've built this up. Go. Yeah, 
generally with Dave, he was a little hesitant at first when I was talking to him, but then when I told him what, you know, we do, and I wanted to talk to him on Tuesday, he goes, that's great. Write up something. And then I, you know, I can't talk to you next Tuesday. Let's talk. Now. Okay. It's fine. But I get it. I don't, I don't need coaching. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to call yeah. Dave. And the first thing I'm going to do is remind him that he spoke with you because prior to his vacation, the reason for that is because I don't want him to think there's blood in the water. I don't want Dave to think that every month he's going to get a phone call from some knucklehead that wants to take over the laundry. Mm, yeah. All right, let's do it. Stand by. Dave, you want to bet $100 Dave doesn't answer? It's a real thing. I, no. Pussy. All right, here we go. Did you guys subscribe? Now you thumbs up. You better sub. Do it. Do it. Come on, Dave. There was no bet. I know you subscribed. Even Dave subscribed. You reached Dave. All right. Date and time. Uh, voicemail IDs is Dave. We already know that. Here's a little trick I play occasionally. Going to call him back because auto dialers and salespeople don't call twice. They haven't figured that out yet. So let's dial him right away. Let's see if curiosity kills this cat. Here we go. Now I know you've subscribed and thumbs it up. So now you can hit the notification bell so you don't miss these lives. We're going to get to your, we're going to get to your questions in a minute. So start asking. Come on, Dave. Oh, you've reached Dave the message and I'll get back to you shortly. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Dave, Danny D'Angelo, I'm interested in leasing some space from you in Sacramento. Uh, I'm not a broker. I'm not an agent. You actually spoke to my partner, Craig, about a month ago. Welcome back. Uh, give me a call. My cell, the only number you need. You can text or call me day or night. Thanks, bud. All right. 50%, 50-50, not bad. What I do with Dave, I input his number in my phone. Like I said, I've got his email. That will be in there as well. If and when he calls me back, if it's in five minutes, or five days, I will get you back on the horn. Don't be surprised if he doesn't. Why? Is his strip mall full? Does he have any capacity? No. So he's listening to the message and thinking I'm a salesman. He's, uh, that's the problem with the world, right? Salesmen are bad. What is this guy doing? I did mention you. I did mention vacation, which makes him know, oh, shit, this guy knows something about me. So we shall see. Don't hold your breath. Don't consider it a personal insult if he doesn't call us. If he doesn't, put this at the top of the list for next week, and we will hit him up again. If I'm Dave, okay, so if he doesn't, I'm not calling yeah. back, and don't be surprised if he doesn't. Don't avoid jumping in the shower or going to the lake because you're waiting for this guy to call back. This will happen. It's a slow and steady race. Yeah. What else? Well, let me ask a question on that. Let Never ask a another... question asking if you can ask a question. Okay. There was another group we called last time and we just left a voicemail or nothing happened. How often do we come back and call these people? Totally did you up suggest to, you. to call this one? Completely but up to But on this you. one here, did you say if, if they haven't called to call them back, use this one next week again? Craig, so, if, if you put two brand new stores in front of me every single week, week in, week out, that's what we will call. If you put uh, Dave's number in front of us every week and he finally answers, fantastic. I, I can't answer that for you. It's one or the other. 
Don't be calling Dave well, in the middle of the night, making sure that he answers his phone or anything of that nature and confusing this scenario. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll ponder that in my off time. Good word. I'm going to keep scouting. Word of the day. All ponder. Right. Thanks, bro. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dan. Bye. All right. Now on to you, Louts. Oy vey. All right. YouTube is telling me now would be a good time to insert ads. Fuck you, YouTube. What's up, fellas, said Ben. I love when you guys talk amongst yourselves. Howdy, yo, yo. I've called 250 locations with zero luck. Okay, good for you. What are you saying to the people? Uh, Try another 250, says Ben. Good luck, buddy. Try to change the style. Maybe you're heating, hitting wrong. <laughs> Mexican, hexican, not Mexican. All right, I don't know what that means. Part of the, I sh- probably shouldn't read these as I do because it could be something bad. Part of the reason they're dying is that no one can find them online. You won't either. There you go. Thank you, Brian. Uh, chill out. Okay, don't, don't call each other names. Uh, hola, Danny. Good calls yesterday. Looking forward to our calls next week. Hi, Will. Thank you for that. You, you don't have to jump around and tell everybody that we're working together. We get it. Uh, these guys are having fights with each other. Testosterone, texts, okay. Knock it off, kids. Danny, you have more voices than the jerky voice. Uh, you know what? I'll see you tomorrow with my fucking tools. That's what I'm going to do. If you do that video, tape it. I'm not sure where we were in the call, Brian. Hey, Danny, wondering if I need down payment on good, good credit to even entertain my luck with distributors once I get my lease agreement. No. No. We Real Estate is this guy's name. So do you real estate? Uh, I'm going to take your question very seriously. Thinking X, Y, or Z is what keeps people from doing anything. Oh, I need good credit, so I'm never going to own a business. You don't. The qualifications to do this, I don't think Scott wants to end up on a live call. The qualifications to do this are that lease. Nothing will qualify you more than having a lease in hand because that's when you call the distributors and you say, rather than, "Um, you know, I might maybe someday perhaps get in the laundry business, you're calling up authoritatively and saying, I own a motherfucking laundromat. Here's the address. I need equipment. Now you're putting all the distributors on notice that you're about to pull the trigger on a store full of equipment and they're about to make their nut. Not stake every Friday on you, but they're going to make some money. Have them show up all at once. Can you envision this? Because I'm pretty good at laying it out for you. Imagine the difference between a guy that calls on the phone and says, hey, can we meet for coffee? I might want to do this someday. And the guy that says, I need equipment. That's the position you'll be in. John says, ask for donation for someone. Okay, that might get complicated. I don't know what that means. Uh, need your first month's lease. Uh, will, we, you will need your first month's lease for rent, and then you should have the abated rent in play. Once you have the 15-year lease in hand, you can get the financing for the... That's not correct. None of my clients give first and last month's rent. Never. The landlords ask for it. Every one of them does, but we don't give it. They'll give you 18 months of free rent, abated rent. Have you ever heard of that, people watching this? Many of you haven't. If you're leasing a studio apartment and you're 18 years old, you're not going to get free rent unless they have a banner out front. First and last free, without any sort of ad, we are getting rent abatement. And oddly, even though they're giving you 18 months free, they'll always ask you for a deposit, first and last, we don't pay it. Because it seems ridiculous, because it is. It's utterly preposterous for them to ask. When we're trying to do a startup and do well in business, and they want to take 10 grand from us, Go watch my videos. I know I have over 700 videos, but I have several actual live calls when we turn a lease deposit from $55,000 on one call to $0. Sorry to beat you up there, Will. Once I have the location with the infrastructure, does laundromat distributors have equipment like change machines and folding tables to avoid going to different parties? Yes, they do. 
and those will be ancillary and they will be rolled into your note. Very good. But I've never seen a change machine in a laundromat that couldn't be brought back to 100% capacity. It's normally a chip. We still see them. I see more laundromats than anyone on the planet. More than the CLA president, more than any of these wannabe gurus, because I'm working with guys like Craig on this call and they're sending me photos. We still see tons of laundries that say, only takes the five, doesn't take the new 20. You call Hamilton or any change company, you get a chip in the mail for free. When they sell this equipment, it's industrial and they always offer lifetime upgrades. Call them up, plug in the chip, now it takes the new money. Rip the goddamn handwritten sign off. But fix your credit, says Will. Good man, I left that out. Fix your credit. If you have an 820 FICO score and no job and holes in your shoes, you can go into a Ferrari dealership in this country and drive off the lot with a new car. You can't afford the payment first month, but they don't know shit about you. I'm not here to talk to you about scamming someone. I'm saying that we are judged by our credit. Fix it. He's right. Is it necessary to do this or just about any other business? I don't know about any other business, but it's not necessary to do this. Now, again, people are answering the questions that have been asked. Uh, it depends. I, by me, it does not have ancillary FFE. Does a tiger to match machines, your local joints? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, now they're talking amongst themselves again. I get abated rent from the jump. With my credit being 659, would my chances of getting 0% down financing be better with having the official lease agreement and such? We already talked about that. Yes. Yes. The landlord, probably 5% of landlords even care about your credit. They don't even ask. They never ask me. It's one of those concerns that keeps people at the J-O-B. When you hear job, does it make you sick to your stomach? It certainly does me. Alex saying lint trap. No, I, now I know where we were in the call. Will is back. He's constantly, you will not get the abatement from the get-go. You will have to pay the first month's rent. Wrong, Will. Oh, sorry, dude. Uh, don't speak authoritatively on something you don't know anything about. Uh, WRT, the credit, it's most likely will take months, if not a year, to land the store. You have time to bring your credit. I made a call two weeks ago in Colorado. One phone call. It's on my channel. Free laundromat. This isn't luck. This isn't about time. But I'm the one that tells people, be prepared for the long haul. You want to go buy a laundromat and buy someone's failure? Do it tomorrow. This is different. This is the only way to do it without that preposterous debt. No one's going to hold up their phone and make a YouTube video. Yeah, the wife and I bought a laundromat and we lost everything. Here it is. Here's the laundry. It took our life savings. Goodbye. People want to talk about their successes, not their failures. Just about every wannabe laundromat guru, when you look, if you can stand to watch their horrific, shitty-ass videos, when they tell their story... It's always that first store that crushed them. But these people were like me. They didn't want to fail totally. They wanted to fail on the first store only. So they went out and did this. They're all trying to sell you a bill of goods, by the way. As am I. This here shit sells itself. That's the difference. I'd rather see you spend five years spinning it in circles, a guy called 250 stores, call 250 more or have me do it. We've established that Craig feels like he made some horrible mistakes. I'm sure he's fine. What if I bring up that I have to spend tens of thousands of dollars for my equipment already as the reason why I can't pay anything up front? Guys, drop it. You're not paying shit up front, period. And we also have a choice. We are picking and choosing the landlords. Let's talk about TI, tenant improvement money. It's in all of my several of my videos. You're so scared shitless to do this and thinking you're going to need money. It doesn't. Folks in my position, if I start a business, I do it with nothing. It becomes a point of pride. Me, Peter Mayberry, there will be no money. I'm 
playing Monopoly. Does it scare the shit out of you to sign a lease? What did it cost you? This much ink? If your good name is important enough that that lease means something to that landlord, you've done well, you're an American. God bless. This works in 28 other countries as well. Still talking amongst themselves. A lot of this is wrong here in the comments, guys, so let's be careful. I'm sure they'll bring it back. No landlord will give you the keys without a first month's rent. Will Jones, you are full of shit, brother. Okay, there we have it. Don't know who this guy is. No landlord will give you the keys without a first month's rent. Dead wrong, dude. Uh, I'd have taken the bet. Okay, thanks. Will, we're making calls, Bill? Dude, none of my clients give first, last, or deposits. Have a look. Oof, scary. Send me a text, Will. Uh, yeah, people are now asking if he has a laundromat. He does not. Apparently, we're working together. Uh, and it's 100000 or two or three in new equipment. It is not. Uh, we might be replacing a row of washers. We might be replacing a row of dryers, tumblers. We don't know. We don't have the store yet. We're not sure. I say 300000 400000 in order to scare the landlords into understanding that we are serious players. And then I see Peter making a comment. One of Danny's clients, I don't own commercial property. I'd never give the tenant keys without a rent abatement, without at least some collateral. So it sounds to me, Will, like you have commercial space or you're full of shit or both. I'm confused. Uh, here's Peter. Peter, you asshole. Try 600000 for new equipment and renovations. Let's call Peter Mayberry. Why not? Why not totally blow up this whole stupid thing? He's probably in coming to Phoenix. Answer the phone, slacker. You don't What's up, buddy? Anything fucking better to do than sit and watch live YouTube, huh? <laughs> well, it actually just popped up on my phone. I thought, whatever. I'm still waiting for Eric to get back here. He's uh, <clears throat> doing some interviews with the people at the laundry. So I figured, why well, wait for him? I'd see what's going on on the old YouTube, and here you are live. He's interviewing people at your laundromat or another laundromat without your presence? No, my employees. Like, he, he's doing, like, a little, I guess he's going to do a YouTube video where he asks them how is, what it's like working the laundry. What is it like working for me? Oh, and he boy. didn't want me in there because he thinks that they're not going to answer. Yeah, that's going right to influence your employees' answers, of course. Well, I watched your video today. Uh, yeah, that I, you're, you're not going to get canceled. You, what, what was the gay term you used? I'm not going to repeat it. Gay ball, because I call Ross gay ball because gay ball. he's a gay guy that always is partying and all wants right. to all go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. All right, we're going to churn through these comments here. Welcome, Peter Mayberry, if you don't know him. This silly fucker started with my DVD discs back in 2014, but now he's such a baller, such a high roller, that he only buys buildings, he installs uh, gaming equipment in his stores that are totally legal, and he's crushing like $8 million a year, so he just walks around like, a, like the, the big man on campus in a high school, and he's probably al always been that guy. Uh, is Megan still around? Uh, no, she, she's there with Eric, but am I coming to see you this weekend? We kind of talked, but then it kind of got dropped. Yeah. When are you coming are you out? Well, I was planning on coming Friday, but let's pretend like, we, let's pretend yet. like we're on the internet with a bunch of people listening. Uh, when, let me know when you're going to be here and we're going to go shoot some guns, blow some shit up and eat some steaks for sure. Maybe we'll go visit my property. Sounds like a plan. All right, good. Uh, Peter, what should I expect to spend on equipment for a 1,740 square foot store? I know what you're going to say. 1,740 square feet. Probably shouldn't bother. Well, for me, I wouldn't bother. But I mean, if it's a high density place that you can cram them in like New York, it might be worth there it. There you go. Smart. If you can get nine, 10 turns a day, it's worth it. If you can get three and a half turns on 1,700 square feet, I'd pass. Yeah, my, my rule of thumb is 1,500 minimum, but what you're really looking for is 25 washers. Anything less than 25 connections, washer connections, don't do it. Normally, a store that's old will have single stack tumblers, one portal <coughs> door. We're going to double that, double dry capacity. But wash capacity, 
without putting in tons of giant 80 pound washers, you're not gonna get away with much. And that's 1,500 square foot under roof. That includes ADA restroom, it includes four square feet on the floor for every tumbler takes space and behind it there's a bulkhead where a guy like me could fit back there and work on it. Peter couldn't fit there, that's why he hires people. Put them I hire small guys. Yeah. How did you get your first property? We're not answering that. Uh, we're gonna end this here pretty quick. I was being frugal on the frugal side. Peter's still talking, but he's on the phone. Uh, can you renegotiate a stadium for the Arizona Coyotes? I could, but I wouldn't because they can't afford me. Uh, I know the distributor walked in with us, Hipsch, and with the measurements, it would be too skinny in between bulkheads with 30s facing each other, so he had to do a mix of tops. And Okay, so I don't know who you are, Big Girls FTW, but I hope we are talking. If not, reach out, send me an email, danny at freelaundromat.com. I'd love to find out. Sounds like you're in the thick of a retool, and I'd, I'd love to talk to you. I don't want to see you make mistakes. That's the reality. I think that's both Peter and my concern for new guys is that we don't want to see you screw up. And it's easy, trust me, especially with distributors trying to sell you more equipment than you need. That's what they are famous for. Uh, Peter Danny has been making calls for me, looking into skills games also. Please do another video on skills. Listen, you're my people. Peter's got this tiny little infinitesimal channel. He's about to get canceled. And <laughs> you're going to go through me for all your skill game shit. We, we do need to have that serious discussion. When Peter and I get together, we're, we're friends. We've known each other for a long time, a lot longer over the phone. But we, we do need to have a very serious discussion and get skill games. Maybe you and I can become senators and we'll go in there and we'll make skill games legal in every state. Well, I actually, you don't know this either, but I actually just signed a deal for Excel. So now I'm a rep for Excel, Excel on a casino. So nice. now I can actually push casino games, but... Oh, yeah. Obviously, I don't own them. I'm just wrapping them. Well, in. We, dude, like I said, we, I got to get mine. So we should talk about how I can bring my people. I just had a client close a lease in Illinois, and the guy. That's is, huge. Yeah, that's yeah. The guy's that's casino. So we need yeah. them. He's the actual salt of the earth guy. Love him. Been working with him for over a year, and I'm like, relax. I'm gonna get you with Peter, and there I have tons of people like that. Because there's, there's some serious do-re-mi involved. All right, uh, Peter. Well, I'll say this too. Like, the skill games are great, but actual casino games obviously destroy skill games and revenue. Yeah. So we'll get him oh, actual yeah. casino-grade games. Nice. He'll have six casino games, and he'll kill it. Absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt he'll kill it. Nice. I'll send him a link to this so he can watch it and get excited about the last three minutes. Uh, Copeland says, wondering what the consultation fee for the deals, uh, should I email you about to buy your course? To be honest, Copeland, get the course first because that's my business card. I want you to watch it. It's inexpensive, not cheap. We just added to it this week. I want you to watch the course, realize that maybe this isn't for you. Maybe you don't want a laundry. That's important to me. See if it's good in your community, your area. It works everywhere, absolutely everywhere. But start with the course. You can get in touch with me directly in there. You can Anybody can email me direct, danny at freelaundromat.com. But I, I want you to be in the fold. I want you to get the course. Watch the videos. There's little quizzes in there. It's, it's lots of fun. All right, you guys are popping up with more and more questions now. How much do you make from a 2,000 square feet laundry on average, just a ballpark, top line, bottom line? Fuck you, Stephen. I don't answer that question. Here's why. I leave that to the liars and the charlatans, the distributors, and the gurus. They will tell you what a 2,000-square-foot laundry, on average, will make. It's a lie. They don't know. If you buy a laundromat, you may never profit. Peter, you can say, yes, no, I'm wrong or right. If you buy a laundromat, you may never make money. People kid themselves. 100% true. People kid themselves. Like I said, it, it, it all comes out of location. You got a great location, you're going to make money. You have a bad location. I don't care how good you are, you'll never make money. There's also people online that have massive YouTube channels about laundromats, and they show them collecting quarters, and they're they're grossing nothing. They're grossing. Yeah, they're losing money. Actually, nothing. I know who you're talking about. Definitely losing money. And they have huge followings. Don't consider 
that your benchmark in any way, shape, or form. And I want to say this, Stephen, what we do, the way that we do it, the way that we scoop up, Peter's after every store that he can get his hands on. He's developing a massive real estate portfolio through this. He picks and chooses, oh, there's a laundromat in this building, I'll buy the fucking building. Done. It's a different, everyone says, oh, I'm in real estate and I like to travel. When's the last time, last time you left the state? Well, it's been five years. What kind of real estate do you have? I'm working on it. It takes money to do real estate, period. You can get into a laundromat with nothing. It's not as easy as buying the building, but it's worth the effort. All right, this is it. This is the last one. I found a distributor, but don't want to make contact yet, Danny, for the games. I don't know it get duns in Texas yet. I'm confused. Peter, uh, when you come out here, we will fuck around. I'm glad you got on the call. I'm excited to see what our editor in kind is putting together. Hello to Eric and everybody else. What do you want to say, Peter? Well, I, say, I, I am looking forward to coming out and seeing you. I need to blow off some steam. And yeah, in Texas, I don't know if they're asking about skill games, but Texas is a gray market. So it's, it's not really legal or illegal, but... Mm. I, I things change. States that are gray, things change fast. Yeah, yeah. Full steam ahead. All right, dude. Thanks for the time, Peter. All right, later, buddy. Talk to you. See you soon. Oh, I hung up on him. I'm famous for that. I think he said, see you soon. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, if, if you're very serious about owning coin laundromats and you just joined us, go back and watch this from the beginning. This is very indicative of the treatment that you get when you work with me. For a very, very few dollars, you're going to watch a video course and you're going to say, wow, wow, because that's me. I didn't build this course almost 20 years ago in order to raise the price every six months or zap you into a second course or a book or a DVD. No, it's the same course that I've been building on, making better, longer, more videos, more information. You have the gist of it. You have the preponderance from watching this channel. I am not a script guy. You can see me looking into your soul, peering into your eyes, because it's just a camera. I don't need a script for this shit. If you are serious about changing your money, changing your futures, I have an idea. Laundromats. You have a better idea? Great. I wish you well. I honestly do. This has changed my life, and the lives of so many of the people that I've worked with and I'm working for. It's not a sales call. Every single time I get on the lives, I want to value add. I want to give you more information. And I think this was a good representation of that. I'm Danny D'Angelo, the self-proclaimed king of laundry, Keep your nose to the grindstone and your ass to yourself. Ciao.